I live and work here in Amherst, Massachusetts. Um, we've lived here for 20 years now, and uh, so mostly these last years I uh, uh, work in my studio and write, but uh, uh, I'm freelance in terms of teaching and traveling to do courses. Before that, I was uh, a sculpture teacher at Sunbridge College for almost 20 years, and uh, uh, before that I taught in Walder schools and other adult education institutions and originally met anthroposophy uh, in my 20s in 1969 when I went to Emerson College. And uh, I uh, have been an artist uh, since uh, I was a teenager, so uh, that's uh, what uh, I've done my whole life. So, so you've been to, to my neck of the woods. I'm originally from West Sussex. Emerson College is in East Sussex. Yes, of course. Oh. You don't live there now, but that's where you're from. No, no, no. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah, I, I love the area. So I'm, I'm so just, just before you tell us about what um, what you're going to be presenting yeah. at, the, at the conference, you mentioned that you write. What is it that you write about? Oh, well, I uh, um, uh, was um, asked to be the editor of the of 10 lectures by Ruel Steiner on the arts uh, that's published as Art as Spiritual Activity. Uh, and I wrote a 100 page introduction to that. So that's uh, still in print uh, through Steiner Books. And then I've written a book called uh, Educating the Will that's available through uh, Waldorf uh, Publications. And then I've uh, I self published other shorter uh, uh, booklets uh, on art and meditation, and uh, I, I wrote about a topic called messonyms, which is a whole topic in itself. But I'll just uh, oh, go, go in. You got it. You got it. What, what is a messonym? Uh, it's like a, a name that's halfway, yes, halfway between of, something. Say again. <laughs> a name that's halfway between halfway between something. Yes, between uh, messonym. We we have uh, synonyms and antonyms. Uh, but uh, I realized that there are not only words that are uh, similar to each other or opposite to each other, but there are words that bridge, uh, mediate between polarities. So, for example, between light and dark is color. <laughs> uh, 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 yellow and blue, for example, is uh, is the pole of uh, color. So, yeah, that's uh, the uh, that would be a whole. Uh, I, okay. uh, I, 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 I might have to interview you. I'm a language nerd, so I might have to interview you about, that, oh. about, you about that on a well, separate time. I'll happily send you a copy if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, so uh, you're you're presenting at the at the conference on the 9th um, about resonance. Yeah. T tell us a little bit about what you're going to be presenting without like too much detail. No. So uh, I, I mean, uh, clearly, as an artist. Um, I've uh, not only been interested in uh, techniques and styles of art, but I'm interested in the inner capacities that we develop uh, in, in doing art. And uh, so it, it uh, is, of course, uh, when we talk about technology, we usually think of uh, the machines that we create. But the word techna originally, of course, referred to practical knowing and in that sense referred to the arts and crafts. And so I am going to try and explore uh, the relationship between the inner capacities uh, that we develop in the arts to those that are developed uh, in the more conventional uh, concept of creating and uh, working with uh, technological machines. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try to connect that to the recent research that uh, is coming out about uh, the left and right hemispheres of uh, the brain. And uh, so clearly one can uh, make the point that the <coughs> arts develop capacities that more emphasize the right hemisphere and actually the relationship between the left and the right, whereas uh, the capacities we use uh, with technology uh, are more related to the left hemisphere alone. And uh, so this is a way to maybe approach technology uh, in terms of, well, what part of my humanity am I developing and what am I not developing? It also points to how we might uh, address the experience we have of becoming one-sided through, for example, an overuse 
uh, of technology. Uh, and, uh, and so in that sense, uh, we can understand how <clears throat> working in the arts would uh, balance. Uh, it would, we would be balancing right hemisphere activity uh, with, uh, with what we are otherwise uh, mainly using the left hemisphere. But then finally, the, the main thing that I would like to get to with this theme of resonance, uh, and, and clearly it relates to the concept of not only uh, uh, digital or atomic technology, but also resonant and moral technology, terms mm -hmm. that Steiner and uh, Paul Emerson have used. Um, explore these terms resonance, but also moral uh, in relationship to the arts. Goethe and Steiner spoke about the moral qualities of color and form. And so in what sense are we uh, schooling capacities uh, for um, understanding how we might develop these other kinds of technologies where moral is sometimes used in regards to goodness, but it is also, I would say, used in regard to uh, spiritual, yes, yeah, spiritual qualities of color and form. Uh, but in this case, it's specifically referring to uh, the etheric, uh, that, that through such qualities we are, are actually learning to live consciously and work with etheric forces. And so uh, again, uh, developing artistic capacities, I believe is a way, uh, one way at least that we can uh, approach the, uh, the, the, the task of developing these other uh, more spiritualized forms of technology. So. I will just kind of dance around uh, some of these topics with practical examples uh, uh, that I'll bring uh, to explore these uh, kind of subjects. That sounds deeply, deeply, deeply fascinating. This um, linking in how how we how we work with our eye into the astral body to yes. to create those uh, etheric forms. Um, exactly. Yeah. One of the one of the things you mentioned, just a, a final question for me, you mm -hmm. mentioned left brain, right brain, which isn't going to be a major part of your talk. But one of the things I've noticed is that uh, Ian McGilchrist seems to yes. interest quite a few people in anthroposophical circles. Is that is that still your frame of reference, or are you or are you coming? He, he is the one that uh, got me going. I I like he references shied away from that some years ago because there was this kind of misunderstanding that these two hemispheres related to different functions. And yeah. uh, his way of uh, presenting uh, research, uh, you know, uh, that's quite extensive and convincing, it seems, um, that it's uh, how uh, the uh, these two hemispheres approach uh, thinking and feeling and willing. And, uh, and so that's where... Uh, I, I found through him I was able to uh, connect what I call I simply refer to as scientific capacities, you know, a scientific, analytical, yeah. logical, mathematical way of thinking, to a more intuitive, living, qualitative uh, thinking. Uh, that that uh, that seems uh, very helpful to uh, understand that. Uh, the reason we have these two hemispheres of our brain is to facilitate what I like to call as two hemispheres of mind, our soul and spirit. And uh, uh, so uh, that's uh, just in the last few years that I've uh, gone into his work uh, uh, extensively and find it very helpful. So it's natural that I'll touch on that at least to some extent. You'll be drawing on him as well. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, so much for talking to us a little bit about what you're going to be presenting. It really does sound interesting. I'm really looking forward to uh, to listening more to what you have to say. And uh, I might come back to you for some names that uh, the books that you talked yeah, about yeah. earlier. But uh, um, yeah, thank you once again, Michael. Thanks very yeah. much for having me, and I look forward to seeing you. Have again. a good. Yep. Bye bye. Bye. So I.